Hello to everyone out there in listeners land. This is the Not So Common Sense Podcast, the home of thinking often and questioning everything. I am your host, Marquita B. Critical thinkers, let's get into it. Hello again, critical thinkers. Thank you so much for joining me on show number two. Today, we are going to get into Howard University. Um, I have quite a few points of view. So, let's jump in full steam ahead. Let's get into it. If you are not aware, if you've been under a rock since August, I'm here to tell you that the students of Howard University have been protesting uh, since August. They are protesting the living conditions. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you've seen photos. There's a, a multitude of photos on online. Just Google, you'll find a plethora of things to look at as it relates to these living conditions. Um, but I will note just a few of the issues. You've got mold in dorms, water damage, flooding, expired uh, air filters, and rodents. It appears um, that approximately 38-ish dorms out of 2,700 dorms are impacted uh, specifically. Now that obviously doesn't include the common areas within a dorm. Um, you know, that's where some of the flooding, et cetera, things are, are seen. So while 38 dorms are impacted, there are definitely common areas from photos that I've seen online uh, that appear to also be impacting uh, students and this is nothing new honestly for Har Howard I mean if you do just a you know a deep dive again into Google you'll note that this uh, situations like this you know have been going on for quite some time uh, there was a situation in 2018 similar situation with living conditions uh, that needed to be addressed as well as in 1989 so <clears throat> there definitely is a history uh, with Howard University and living conditions uh, being an issue and, and just not up to par uh, for students. So, and it's kind of sad, you know, when you think about a historically black, black college um, or university, I mean, I could just go off and, and name the multitude of black colleges and universities uh, that have a, you know, a good uh, track record that are uh, prestigious in their own right and have the respect of you know, students, alumni, and even people who did not attend um, those uh, those schools and universities. So it, it does hurt my heart that, that, you know, the students are going through something like this and that they've been going through it for so long. Uh, you're not talking about a, a college, you know, that it's just pennies on the dollar to go to. Um, you know, Howard does have, you know, a, a, a nice little price tag. I mean, for students without any um, financial assistance, you're looking at about forty-three to forty-four thousand for students that are paying full price, uh, and for students who are getting aid, they're still paying about thirty grand uh, to go there. So this is a, a good amount of money. Uh, we're talking uh, definitely not chump change. Uh, something, you know, enough money to where situations like this, there should be no problem in rectifying them. It, you know, unfortunately, though, I mean, this has been all over, all over the news almost daily. Um, you have students who are sleeping outside. It's just so much and, and not a lot has been heard. Matter of fact, I haven't, don't think I've really heard anything from school administration about the issue. At least nothing has been broadcast about that. So, I don't know, I'm not close enough to the administration or, any, or Howard University to know if the administration has addressed any students that are you know, currently protesting with, or provided them with any information, I just, I don't know. But I will say that I do worry about the reputation of Howard, you know, in years to come. How hard will it be for them to retain uh, current students as well as new students that wanna come in? And I, I don't just mean uh, next year, but even, you know, the next semester coming up, you know, is there going to be an impact to the retention of students for the spring semester? You know, those are just questions, things that I wonder about um, if I'm, you know, thinking critically about the situation as a whole. I feel like 
their name has kind of been run through the mud, uh, in a sense, with no um, public announcement of anything being fixed. So it just makes me, from the outside looking in, you know, scratch my head a little bit, like, well, what's going on? Do they care about the students? Like, I would think this would be something they would immediately, immediately want to address um, and just not say nothing. Um, but that is yet to be seen. Um, and then it also makes me question, you know, I, I know that most schools, universities receive, you know, good donations and or um, have an endowment fund. And I know that there's a whole lot of red tapes when it comes to donations and endowments, uh, specifically that if a donor is handing money over to a school and they say that it's for this particular thing, whether it's, you know, to build a library in the name of the donor or someone that they know or to, you know, build any sort of structure or to uh, give money to a particular school that's on campus. I know that when, you know, there's a lot of red tape. What the donor says is how that money has to be used or, you know, if the school chooses to use it for some other um, need that they have similar to this, like if they decided that they wanted to use a donation for the library to fix up these dorms, that is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. So I could I could see how, you know, they don't have any endowment or donation funds allocated specifically to. However, I mean, my goodness, is this the point where you start making phone calls, uh, asking prior donors if they can reallocate <laughs> their funds for another purpose that is nationwide or now a publicly known problem? I don't know. I don't know how administrations handle all that stuff. But again, my critical thinking is just asking so many questions uh, that I would love to have an answer to. Um, but it's interesting because, like I said, you know, this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, recently, Howard was actually given back in October of this year, they were given the largest donation that the university had ever seen. Uh, a donor uh, by the name of uh, Dr. Wayne, uh, he and his wife, uh, it's Dr. Wayne and Sylvia Brown uh, gave a donation, the largest in history, to the school. Uh, it was a donation of This is a couple, both of whom attended, I believe both of them attended Howard University uh, and received their educations debt-free. So I don't know if they had a grant or if they were just well off enough to have gone there free, you know, debt-free, but they didn't pay anything. Um, additional, you know, like out of pocket when they went to Howard. And so they're given this donation to support the graduation retention access to continued excellence grant, which is also known as the Grace Grant. Uh, this is a grant that is given to assist students with financial barriers. So if a student, for whatever reason, doesn't have enough money to go to the school, they could possibly become eligible for this grant to get the money that they need uh, to then attend Howard University. So that I, I think that, that in, in, in and of itself, with all that's going on on campus, I'm sure these people, they own, like I believe, an investment company. They've seen the news. <laughs> they know what's happening on campus at the school that at least one of them is an alumni of. So it's just so weird to me that with that being said, they would give a donation to help students with financial barriers. And listen, I don't wanna tell anyone how to spend their money. That's the last thing I wanna do. But if I'm putting my critical thinking or AKA thinking cap on, it just seems odd that they would give this donation to help students attend a school, but then to live in terrible living conditions. Because that, I mean, is that not what would happen? The student would get the money from the grant to go to the school, but then to to, to presumably <laughs> then be added to the picket line of protesters uh, due to the living conditions. So to me, it's a little bit of an oxymoron. I'm a bit confused about it. It is the largest donation that they've ever given, that any uh, donor has ever given to the school. So it's like, man, couldn't just a small portion of that have been allocated to address the issue? I, I don't know. I, I'm scratching my head on that one. Uh, again, I can't tell folks how to, you, how to spend their money, but it definitely seems like the wrong time, <laughs> terrible timing to make a history, um, 
a donation so large that it's a history making donation. It's the wrong time for that when you have kids who are living in tents outside. Um, in addition, I mean, there are numerous celebrities, you know, that have gone to the school. <clears throat> I, where are they? I haven't heard from any one of them, haven't heard from any one of them saying they would give a donation. I mean, it's been mums the word, nothing, what's the next topic? It, it, I've not heard from any of these people. If you've heard from them, please address me in the comments and let me know because maybe I've been living under a rock. Not heard a thing. Uh, in addition, you've got folks like Felicia Rashad, who's also been mums the word, um, but she's much closer to, you know, she's not, you know what, actually, I'm not even sure if she is an alumni of the school, but I know that she is a dean of the school now. Um, and let's just go down memory lane for a minute. Felicia earlier this summer was in hot water due to her comments about Bill Cosby's release. Now, we're familiar with her working history with Bill Cosby. I mean, everybody loved The Cosby Show. Um, if it comes on now, I'm still going to watch it. Don't judge me. Um, we know of their long working history between the 80s and the 90s. An amazing show. Um, we also know that Bill Cosby was charged, you know, and I don't want to say it on, I'll just say assault. Uh, he was charged by 60 women of assault. And even through all that, Felicia Rashad, you know, still stuck by him and, and, and defended him. So <clears throat> most recently, uh, she was in hot water with, I guess, not just the school, but the general public for her comments after Cosby's release. Mind you, she had recently been made the dean of the College of Fine Arts. Um, and so her comment right after his release was, finally, a terrible wrong has been righted. A miscarriage of injustice is corrected. Well, that put students in a frenzy. A students immediately called for her to be fired as the dean. But interestingly enough, the school did not fire her. So, <clears throat> and I think um, I must also mention that once she was receiving the backlash from the school, the public, I mean, she was harassed on Twitter. It was a whole ordeal. After she um, received that backlash, Bill Cosby stepped in and he said, well, if you decide that you want to fire her, give me back all the money that I've donated over the years. Now, I did a little research online, was unfortunately unable to find the amount of money that he's donated. I know most sites, apparently a lot of people were looking for that amount. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's an undisclosed amount. I'm pretty sure he was giving money over the years. So I'm quite positive that it was multi-millions of dollars, almost 90, almost 100% positive on that. Um, but either way, he gave a whole lot of money. Now, the school, like I said, did not at least publicly take any action. She didn't lose her job. As of today, she is still the dean of the College of Fine Arts, which is named, it's actually the College of Fine Arts of Chad, Chadwick A. Bozeman. So... Uh, rest in peace, Chadwick Bozeman. But the school is is named after him that she's the dean of. And so then immediately after Bill Cosby stepped in, Felicia Rashad ended up doing a formal apology to students and teachers and their families to the dean of the College of Fine Arts. And then she later tweeted about... Um, you know, not wanting to, she saying that she didn't want to condemn and that she respected sexual assault victims. Now, with all of that said, <clears throat> I will just say that I think in the moment where Felicia Rashad responded to Bill Cosby uh, being released from jail, I think in that exact moment, her fingers went crazy. She didn't uh, send anything through her PR. I think she literally might have had, you know, a senior moment and forgot that she was the dean of this fine arts school on Howard University campus. That's just my guess, that, that, that's what I feel in my heart of hearts. I think she forgot that she was now no longer just an actress in Hollywood, that she was a dean of a college. Or maybe it's the fact that because she's a woman of a particular age, she thought that she'd be able to say whatever she wanted 
and get away with it. Now, while I don't fault her on her position uh, or her wanting to stick by her on-screen husband of so many years, I don't want to fault her for her opinion. Listen, I don't know anything about uh, other than what I can see visually of their relationship. And things seem to be great. She stuck by him. They, they seem to have stayed in constant communication since the Cosby show in the 90s. So I don't want to speculate on their relationship. But I will say nine times out of ten, she knows him much better than me or any one of you listening to this podcast do. I'm pretty sure of that. So I don't want to speculate on that. That's her prerogative, her right to side with that man, regardless of the charges that he was facing. <clears throat> but I do fault her for sharing her opinion. When I saw that tweet uh, where she was, you know, so excited, I guess, that Bill Cosby was now being righted or, you know, being released, I immediately said, man, as a dean of a school, <laughs> no sexual assault victim on that campus will ever trust her with any of their concerns. If they ever had an issue, if they were ever assaulted on campus, they would never want to go to her because they wouldn't feel as though they would be heard, and rightfully so. I can't even blame them for that, that point of view. So I think, you know, she definitely messed up. I will say that we are all on the outside looking in and all that we're seeing is surface level. None of us can honestly say what we do or do not think Bill Cosby did with these 60 women. I have no idea. I do ex respect assault victims that have a legitimate case and I hope that they all do get their due justice. With that being said, it's very hard for me to try to explain why 60 women came forward with allegations against him, yet his case was overturned and he was released from jail. I can't make any sense of that. Could it have been the amount of money that he has? Could it be the fame and who he is? I have no clue, and I'm just going to leave it at that. But I'm not going to speculate on whether he did. I don't know. I, I, mm -mm. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing any of that today. Again, I respect assault victims with legitimate claims and hope that they all get their due, their due justice. That's it. But what I do want to do is I want to fast forward. Um, I kind of gave a little bit of that quick synopsis because recently... If we fast forward to present day, Miss Felicia Rashad and her sister Debbie Allen were both on campus. This was last week um, in early November. They were both on Howard University campus um, for the university president, uh, whose name is Wayne Frederick. He does an annual like state of university address, like the state of the university address, excuse me. He does this annually. And apparently they came on campus um, to hear the university state of address. And so prior to the two women walking into the building where the meeting or the state of address was going to be held, there were, of course, tons of cameras. You know, you've got Felicia Rashad and Debbie Allen, two amazing actresses on campus. Why wouldn't they want to ask, stop them for, you know, asking uh, for some questioning? So Debbie Allen was asked a question about why she was, you know, at the school and, uh, you know, what they were doing there for that day. And so I'm just going to give a quick synopsis of, of the conversation. She mentioned that, you know, the president was about to give the university, um, the annual university address. But then she went into, you know, that the school, you know, means a lot. And that when students don't speak, the nation is not doing well. But before she could even, you know, further elaborate, Felicia Rashad, who was standing right next to her, stepped right in or interrupted and said, and when the students do speak and their concerns are being addressed, what then? So she posed it as a question in which her sister Debbie Allen rebuttaled. Well, not really rebuttaled, but she asked then she was like, well, so are the students issues being addressed and then again Felicia Rashad immediately ended the conversation 
She turned around, walked into the building, held the door open for her sister. And as she did that, she repeated to her sister two or three times, I wouldn't go there if I were you. I wouldn't go there if I were you. So she's holding the door open. She's telling her sister, not even, I don't even, no, she didn't even say I wouldn't go there. She said, I wouldn't get into that if I were you. She repeated that two or three times before Debbie Allen walks in behind her and then the door starts to close. So the clip that's out all over the internet, that's all that they show. That's as far as it goes. But that had me really scratching my head like, what is really going on here? So you've got two sisters who apparently care about the school. I will note that prior to that particular questioning being um, recorded, Debbie Allen had like walked to like a, was walking around campus and was in like a common area with a ton of students. And she was talking about, how you know, her love for Howard University, how this is where things started for her. You know, she's known about the school since she was a child and she posed a question, you know, saying that she wanted to hear from the students. What's going on on Howard University campus? That's another clip that circulated on, on, on the Internet. And so, see, she seemed to genuinely be concerned with what was happening on campus. It wasn't just, I'm here to showboat. I'm here to see what this president's talking about. She really wanted to hear from the students and possibly offer assistance. I don't know. It didn't go that far um, in the clip that I saw. But she definitely was genuinely concerned, is my point. And so then seeing her conversation with Felicia Rashad, just really, it was interesting to me to see how Felicia was so quick to interrupt her sister twice and then to seemingly try to shut her up um, and, you know, and then proceed to go in for the university address. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that clip. I just, well, really, I do know. It was very interesting. And it made me wonder with all the stuff that Felicia was dealing with during the summer upon Bill Cosby's release, is she still, even though she hasn't lost her job, like I said, nothing happened to her publicly after that with her comments. However, maybe something was going on behind the scenes. I don't know. I'm speculating. So it made me think, is she still in some way behind the scenes fighting for her job? Or is she in some way saving face for the school to potentially get back in her good graces? Because while she sent a letter to the students and the family and I believe the teachers of the School of Fine Arts apologizing for her comments towards Bill Cosby and, to and her siding with Bill Cosby, as well as her tweet, you know, apologizing to assault victims, maybe that wasn't good enough. I mean, maybe she, first off, do I think that she wrote any of that? I don't. I, this woman has known Bill Cosby since the 80s. I don't see how she could flip that switch off so quickly, in my opinion. I have no, there's no question in my mind that some, uh, PR agent put all that together and she submitted it and sent it out. That's just, that, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. She's not dropping that man. She didn't just one day side with the man, you know, be thankful that he's getting out and, you know, his injustice was overturned to then say, you know, those are not my thoughts. Um, I apologize for my comments. I, I don't believe it. You're not going to tell me that that absolutely not. Put your th critical thinking cap on, but I'm just not even doing that. But I think at the end of the day, she likes the role that she now has as a dean on Howard University campus. She could just be saving face to get back into their good graces. Because maybe behind the scenes, while to us, she's still the dean. The students have stopped calling for her to be fired. At least I haven't seen anything uh, since you know, from se since several months ago, where the students wanted her to be fired, maybe behind the scenes she's dealing with some 
I don't want to say backlash, but maybe, maybe things are just weird. I, I don't know. But it just, I was just very surprised to see her. And honestly, what else would I expect her to do? She is employed by Howard University. So why wouldn't she shut down anything that might be, whether it's her sister saying it or not, why wouldn't she shut down anything that is coming off as Howard University not addressing their students? So I guess that's all I have to say about that. It's just interesting <clears throat> how the whole, the whole dynamic. But I will say, while she was so quick to say, well, when students do speak out and, they're and their concerns are being addressed, well, what then? When she posed that question, I was like, well, well, you're right. What then? Because we haven't heard that the issues have been addressed. The students have taken over the, I believe it's the student union area. Um, it's called the Blackburn Building, and now they're calling it the Blackburn Takeover. If you look at photos online, they've taken over the inside, and there's also a multitude of tents on the outside of the building where students are just, they're not going back to their dorms, they're not going back to class. They are, they are protesting all day, every day, right there, and they've been doing it, I think, out of that building for the past couple of weeks. The protests have been going on since August, but they've been out, they've taken over this Blackburn building for the last two or three weeks. So what issues have been addressed if they're still protesting? Like, I, I'm very confused, Felicia, I don't understand. Please tell us what's being addressed. And so and, until we hear what that is, I, I think the situation's gonna keep going. I think if they are talking to students, it might just be talk and no action, which is a problem. But I know at this point, Students not only want the dorms fixed, those common areas fixed, the flooding, rodents, all that stuff. I mean, I've seen mold that looks like a science project that you would grow in a Petri dish in biology class. That's how terrible, I mean, air filters. How much is it to get a pack of air filters and change them out every 30, whenever they need to be done? I mean, it's just, it's some things that could definitely be fixed immediately. Other things, I think are just, some of the stuff I've seen, you might need to knock down the building and just start over, in my opinion. But the, I mean, the conditions are just, they're important, they're deplorable, it's terrible. So I would just love to know if Felicia Rashad is a part of those meetings that they're having and things are being addressed, it doesn't, it's not adding up. My critical thinking hat is telling me that it's not adding up because these students are still outside. And now the temperatures will soon, well, they've already started dropping. So I don't know, it's not making sense. Oh, additionally, the students are now saying that they want, um, they don't wanna be docked for having missed classes. Because again, they've not been going to school. They've not been doing any of that. They've been outside of this building. So they want immunity from um, the coursework that they've missed, the classes that they missed, tests, exams, all of that. So I don't know how all that's gonna play out. Um, I think, yeah, that, I don't even know how the school would even begin to unpack that. That's a ball of spaghetti that, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't want to have any involvement if I was an, an administrative staff, honestly. I would want nothing to do with it. But I think there's a lot of questions and concerns that definitely need to be addressed um, sooner rather than later. I think by being mums the word or silent is not helping Howard University at all. Um, even if they just publicly said, we know the issues, we're addressing the issues, just say something publicly to at least um, let the students know that you hear them, let the parents know that you hear them, let potential students for next semester, next year know. Like, I can't even imagine allowing my, my daughter to go to this school or even thinking that she's gonna submit an application to a school where the students are outside. And I mean, it's so weird because even on the news, there have been a couple of students who were like, my parents are paying almost 50 grand a year for me to go here and I'm out here protesting because I can't live in my dorm. That's insane. So you're paying 50 grand for your child to not be able to sleep without breathing issues, who knows what you're breathing in with that mold, um, like just wet conditions due to the flooding or water damage, rodents. Now, when you had me at rodents, that's enough. That's an absolute no. 
Like, I can't even imagine. So I'm just wondering if they're concerned about backlash from, or not even backlash, but the potential for their admissions to drop or their retention uh, ratio to drop. It has to be a concern. I can't even imagine how it couldn't be a concern. But like I said earlier, this is the time we're making phone calls to some of these previous donors. Hey, the $5 million donors, can we use a portion of this money to address the situations that we have on campus? I mean, a true alumni, I can't imagine they'd want to see their school go down the tubes. I can't imagine that. I could be wrong, but I can't imagine that they'd be okay with donating to have other buildings or other things added, but then not care about the students who are actually going to be a part of those programs that they're donating to. So you want them to live in these terrible conditions, but still go to your library to get some studying done. That makes no sense to me. I mean, just from a keeping up the the good name of the school just from that perspective alone like I would think all the celebrities who have gone there would just step in have a comment especially being the fact that I mentioned earlier it's 38 dorm rooms that are uh, directly impacted that doesn't seem like a large lift now I don't know what's behind the walls etc they might find out that when you go in to fix something small there's a, a another issue behind it that's a whole nother can of can of worms but i feel like someone should be saying something the students are all they're on a limb of their own and i've yet to see anyone throw one of those donuts out for them to latch on to I've, I've not seen anything so yeah that's how i feel about that i think way more can be done I think if we want to continue to have black colleges and universities that people view as prestigious and uh, feel as though it's worth them going and spending their money, we have to do better. You know, this is not a problem that I've heard of at Harvard, Yale, or, you know, and I know there are two, two different types of schools. I get that. I, I get donation money is different. I totally get that. But you have to take care of what you have. You know, Howard is, is very historical. It's been around for a very long time. There's no reason that it should be in the condition that it's in. Not when you've got so many people who have come out of there and have claimed to have received college, uh, quality education. Now, if the school is not doing what they need to do from a fiduciary perspective with their money, that's a whole nother conversation. I'm not in the accounting room. I don't handle their books. Um, but it does lead me to question, what are they, uh, forget about donations. What are you doing with the money that you're getting for tuition? You know, the, all the money that comes in annually. What's happening with that? Because the school is not cheap. If we were talking about a school that was charging 15 or 20 grand to go, then I could say, okay, maybe they don't have enough money to keep up with all this other stuff on campus. But they're definitely making a decent amount of money. Definitely. There should be no reason for your, your campus to look this way. And if I'm a prospective student, if I'm in high school, and I've been talking about going to Howard all my life, I knew I wanted to apply, it's like, man, are my parents going to allow me to take the chance to submit my application and I be one of the students in the 38 dorms that are, you know, dumps <laughs> like that's just not a chance that I'm willing to take so I'm gonna look elsewhere I don't know what other issue might pop up you know I don't want to take my chances have money spent and then you know you go from a dorm issue to I don't know what others maybe the dorm issue continues in the next year maybe it becomes a whole nother can of worms you know that students are protesting about like it's just the you know, the, the saying goes, all publicity is good publicity. This is absolutely bad publicity. There's no way that I could spend the dorm living conditions to be good. I, I've tried to figure it out. I've tried to think of one way to make it look good. There are zero ways that this looks good. It's absolutely terrible. And so I just implore the staff of Howard University 
Do better. Address the students. Let the general public know that you're at least working on it. Whatever Felicia Rashad seems to know, I think the general public, but really the students and their parents who are investing their money into your school for their education, they definitely need to know what is being worked on because it's absolutely insane. And so that is my commentary for today. As always, if you have any reaction, please feel free to leave it in the comment field below. If you have any questions, leave those as well. My email is also posted, so feel free to reach out. If you are interested in doing any advertising with the Not So Common Sense podcast, please, by all means, email me and let's have a chat. Until next time, think often and question everything. Bye-bye now. Hey, Critical Thinkers, thank you for listening to the Not So Common Sense podcast. Please help elevate this podcast by either liking, sharing, or subscribing based on your listening platform. Until next time, be blessed, think often, and question everything.